Welcome to a tutorial on our outdoor lighting calculation tool. In this session, we'll take an introductory look at this tool, providing general insight on its functionality. The goal is not to cover every aspect of the tool, rather the most common elements to help you quickly become more comfortable using this tool. Okay, we are now in our outdoor lighting calculation tool. The tool itself includes three top level controls, and then below that, a corresponding second level of controls. The top levels include Luminaire, Calculations and Results, and Settings. Setting provides little to no value for almost all users, so in our tutorial today we'll exclude this completely. So we'll start with a Luminaire selection, and here we'll just hit our drop down box and we can pick a corresponding Luminaire, whichever one we're interested in. In this case we'll go ahead and pick uh, this product here. And as you make a selection, the tool will continue to update to reflect the changes that have been uh, implemented or requested by the user. The only other thing that I may consider in the Luminaires tab is a light loss factor. So it defaults to 1.0, which means we're assuming day one performance. If I wanted to put a value in less than one to reflect lumen depreciation over time, you would do that in this tab. It's not required, but is available in case uh, somebody were to want to use that. So that's it really for the Luminaires tab. Most of the work is going to be done in the Calculation and Results tab. We'll start by picking a fixture orientation. So you have a drop down box here to pick from. We'll select Single. And then as the tool updates, there's also a way to rotate this. So if, it, if you want to rotate this, if this wasn't representative of your design, you can rotate the Luminaires as well. All right, so once that happens, we have some defaults that are already selected based on this illuminance criteria of uh, 0.2 foot candle minimum and 20 to 1 max to min, which is the recommended practice for parking lots. So you can see down here we have a minimum of 0.2 in this design. It does show us an average, and then we show a max to min of 12 to 1. This is allowing a, a lot of things to float for the tool itself, and you see it's giving us a 37 foot optimal pull height with a spacing of 180 by 215 feet. And here are some other recommendations around optimizing the tool. For most applications we won't be able to use this because we may have existing pole locations. Um, there might also be ordinances around pole height or, or economics constraining the, uh, the height of the pole itself. So let's go in and we will, we will change our settings. So here's our X coordinates, here's our Y coordinates, and we are going to call our X, say 120 feet. And let's say our, our pole spacing on the Y coordinate is 160 feet. The other thing is, let's say our, our pole height, we have an existing pole and the, the luminar height is going to be at 25 feet. So we're no longer going to allow the pole height to float. And you can update and fix those in. And as we do that, it um, tells us based on the product that we've selected, we now have a minimum of 0.39 foot candles. That's happening where the X is here in the middle of our application, so as far away from the pole locations as you'd expect. And then it tells us our maximum is 5.5 is foot candles, and the maximum is occurring right below the poles. The max to min is 14 to 1, so it's within our 20 to 1 max to min. So this is telling us this meets the needs of our illumination criteria that we've set forth as well as under the constraints that have been fixed. Let's say this was a retail application and, and maybe instead of 0.2 foot candles, let's say we wanted a half a foot candle and maybe the max to min of 15 to 1, so better uniformity within the application itself. Now as a, as a tool updates, we're getting a, an icon here warning us that we're now below the illuminance criteria of 0.5 that we've set out. So we can change that by going back to the Luminaire tab. And here we have a 22,000 lumen product. Um, let's go ahead and pick the 29,000 lumen product and see if that gets us to the 0.5 that we're after. And as the tool updates, it does show now that we are at a 0.51 foot candle minimum. So now we're meeting that illuminance criteria that's been set. And our max to min remains at 14 to 1. So in addition to that, you can go to the Displays tab and you can turn some of these contour lines on or off. So this is again more stylistically what you might be interested in, in kind of cleaning up. If you're interested in more calc points, you can activate that. And now we have more specific um, lumen values within the design. 
If you think that's too small and you want to eliminate some of them, you can hit the minus mark and uh, remove some of them, make the font larger. We can also turn off our mins and maxes if we so desire. You can also change to an isometric view by clicking here. In this view, I can click my mouse and I can manipulate the orientation of the view. I can also roll my mouse to make this larger or smaller. In addition, you can share your results either through a link or an email. This is also printable. And here I can change the title of the document. There are also footers available to personalize this even further at the bottom of the document. So that concludes our tutorial on our outdoor lighting calculation introduction. I hope it helped. Thanks for watching.